Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Marketing Podcast, your source for all things marketing. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres to keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today I have Sean Foote on the line, and he's Director of Digital Marketing over at Wilton Brands. Sean, welcome to the show. Hey, Adam. Uh, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. So uh, excited to get into today's topic, Sean. I mean, you're the guy I want to talk to this about. Um, so key components to digital marketing in today's marketplace. Um, but before we get into that, I want to get a little bit further into what you're doing over at Wilton Brands. So tell us a little bit more about the company, please. Sure. So Wilton Brands is a uh, bakeware and consumables company focused on inspiration of creativity in everyone, everywhere, every day. Um, and we look to really for that connectivity between baking and decorating and how people share that experience um, with, with their, their families. Uh, it's really a, it's a 90-year-old legacy brand um, mm. focused on omnichannel marketing um, and with key partners like Walmart, Target, Amazon, with a strong focus on content, which would be inbound marketing, right, as well as the overall digital marketing effort. Um, with, a, with, with a consumer-centric and data-driven approach, which is something we're def- we'll definitely get into in this discussion. All right, Sean. So I think that's a great, um, a great transition and way to get into today's topic. So uh, let's see. So key components to, di- to digital marketing in today's marketplace. Uh, where do you want to start with tackling that one? Sure. I'll kind of like – I think it hel- it's helpful to outline it first, right, because there's a lot to consider here. But there's really three main components with two that are very foundational. Um, one, or, one of which is, is starting with your audience, or a term that's, that's kind of thrown around a lot now is consumer centrism, right? So it's everything from the product to the marketing and messaging to the assets. It all starts with the consumer's needs and challenges, right? Alongside with that, just as importantly is, how to, is having a data-driven methodology, Right, so you start with first and third party data points to inform the direction overall, and really the the more sophisticated enterprises inform their larger their, i mean their processes everything they do on a daily basis with data to some degree, and this makes the product and content inherently smarter and thereby more efficient in the market and as you know, Adam, you know efficiency really is the foundation of growth, mm-hmm. right, so that data driven methodology is key. And then how, you know, consumer centrism and really listening to your audience paired with that data-driven methodology roll into what is considered to be that organization or our organization at Wilton, the full digital ecosystem, which is really uh, the the marketing funnel, uh, inbound, outbound activations. And then, of course, you know, you can't can't be in business these days without uh, technology and MarTech specifically being a large part of the conversation. So it's really consumer centrism paired with data-driven methodology and how they support your larger digital ecosystem. Let's talk a little bit more about the uh, about the Martech component of this because uh, you know you have so there's a lot of different you know business owners, entrepreneurs, executives listening, um, and you have the um, the benefit of working with you know such an established um, brand, been around for a long time, cutting edge on this stuff in a very defined niche. How does Martech um, affect a brand like that, uh, like a large established brand like yours? Oh yeah, I, I mean I, I'd say it's table stakes. These days, mm. uh, you, you really have to, to to leverage automation to scale, right? And and mm-hmm. what does automation mean, or what does Martech mean as it applies to digital, right? So right. some examples that that might be more well known are uh, like email marketing and email marketing automation, right? How do you build, build out segmentation for your for your list? Uh, obviously, analytics and tracking are, are also key considerations. People are very familiar with platforms like AdWords and Google Analytics. Well, how do you centralize when you, for for example, at Wilton, you know, we have over 5 million followers on social, right? Mm -hmm. Pretty much industry leading uh, in in, in our, in our vertical. How, how do we also work in email? How do we work in paid media? How do we work Mm -hmm. in organic or, or search engine optimization, right? How do we, how do we pull all of these into one place so we can get at them and visualize the data in a way that's actionable for the enterprise, right? So I think it's, it's a combination of analytics, uh, automation, um, and then what's coming down the pipe, right? I would say it's actually here now, and it, it's becoming a differentiator for brands. Is 
is experimentation and personalization, right? Mm. And what does that mean? That, well, experimentation, experiment, experimentation is is like split testing, you know, meaning like A/B mm-hmm. tests, where you really kind of put on what I like to say is put on the lab coat um, as a marketer and start to challenge your uh, your best practices and challenge your assumptions. Um, and then layer that on with like an evolution to true one-to-one personalization where a user's interaction with the website um, actually helps evolve the website to make it more personalized to to their habits and to their affinities. Um, and, and you kind of leverage all of those together, and that's what, that's what really drives efficiency and then ultimately scale over time. Man, that that whole concept of hyper personalization is just so interesting to me. Like, and if we think about like, what was the first personalization? It was probably like you could use the person's name in an email on an email list. Like, yep. you could put dear so and so, be dear Sean or dear Adam with the with the same email. And that was cool to me way back when. I'm like, whoa, it's an email to me, right? <laughs> but now, like, the level of hyper personalization, especially when you think about things like chat bots and just all these other things, it just becomes really interesting to be able to build a relationship um, with a consumer um, over time using automation. And, I, and I'm going to say this, and it's going to sound funny to you, Sean, but it might not sound funny to you, but it might sound funny to other people listening that aren't marketers or professionals, but I swear I've used chat bots and other automation tools that I know companies set up for me to where I've had multiple customer service um, interactions with their um, automation tools, and I feel closer to that brand because the tools were so good that my problem was solved every time, and it was the same as if I was talking to a person. <laughs> That's my yeah, personalization absolutely. at its highest level. I have an emotional connection to the company based off the service they provided, even though I haven't even talked to anybody at the company, based off of the automated tools they provided to help me in these multiple situations. Um, like, so, uh, hyper-personalization, I think, is really, like you said, it's here, um, but it's going to get even more interesting going forward. Yep, absolutely, and, and it's the whole Internet of Things, right, mm-hmm. and voice search and, and the Alexas of the world, so to speak, right, Amazon being a big player there. It's really mm-hmm. how is artificial intelligence being wrapped into business and into digital, and, I, I, you know, I'd say like two or three years ago, it was a luxury, and I think any more yep. brands that really want to scale and want to stay differentiated um, beyond just the basics like content and, you know, inbound, outbound methodology uh, really need – to leverage technology to, to grow. I mean, it's, it's, it's becoming more and more foundational. Let's, uh, let's talk to our uh, small business owners for a moment, Sean. So obviously you're working with a big company, big brand, lots of followers. What are some, but I, but I know you have your, you know, your finger on the pulse of what's going on in marketing. What are some, what is a thing or two that maybe small business owners should be thinking about right now when it comes to their, their marketing, um, from your vantage point, that is? Absolutely. I'd say one of them, and it's along the same lines, the the two things that I called out aren't gated by uh, resources, right? So Mm -hmm. Really glad you said that, by the way, Sean. Really glad you said that, Sean, but then that's why I asked the question because I was hoping you'd go back there because I'm like, I don't want people that are listening to this to think, oh, only like, only your company, only Wilson can do this or only, no, it's the same thing. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I I had to throw that out there. I'm glad you went there. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, so what does customer centrism and data-driven methodology mean to the SMB? And, and a, a little bit of context here, by the way. You mm-hmm. know, I've been in small business. I've been in, in startup. So, you know, my experience, I have experience at Google as well, right? So I've kind of been on both sides of the pond there, and I understand, you know, the challenges on both, with both kind of, I guess, users. Mm-hmm. But customer centrism, right, what is that really about at its foundation? It's just really understanding your users, right? And there are tools out there that are free, uh, like Google Analytics, and the affinities and the mm-hmm. demographics and the tools you can that you can leverage. I would say one piece of advice is get to know Google Analytics. If you aren't using yes. it, you're already you're already behind the eight ball, right? Mm-hmm. So t- Google has classes out there that you can take. You know, for certification, I would recommend you know either the owners or someone on their team in marketing, depending on the structure of their organization, take that and really start to understand their audience. So their users that come to their website, what devices are they on? You know, what affinities do they have? What, is, what content are they attracted to, right? You pair that with the data-driven methodology of making – we all have our assumptions and our inherent biases, right? We all do. Um, it, mm-hmm. it, that's just a fact. So how do we step outside of our comfort zone a little bit and look at the data 
to be more to become more objectionable and really make smarter choices for the business outside of our bias, right? And I think those two things compare, I'd say, along with being really smart with the content and, and where you do invest. Like, what type of content is your business creating to, to inspire engagement, right? And those three things paired together with how you're activating. And I could, I could you know, I could talk to you an hour about just the marketing activation in general from a full funnel, from the top, like attraction, consideration, decision, and delight. Right? How is each organization and each lever within your business investing in those areas? So you have a, I would say, a replicatable marketing process and a funnel that's filling the top and, and also retaining, right? So I love it. those, so, so, so Google Analytics is foundational, right? Be smart with your paid media, you know, leverage paid social, leverage search smartly, but really, make it all built on that foundation of customer centrism and, and a data driven methodology and you're setting yourself up for success. Man, I love it. And uh and I knew I knew you'd give me one solid like takeaway and, and that I could bring out and that Google Analytics for all you small business owners. I'll give you I'll pick on our company just for example. Um we we I we finally set it up. If you've been telling me to do it forever, I didn't do it for maybe a year and a half or something and I, our website was just like a resume. It wasn't a like I didn't have it set up right all these other things. I look and just one metric, our bounce rate on the old website was like something ridiculous, like seventy some, like seventy something percent. So that nobody was staying on the site. They go to it and they'd be gone in a minute, in a second or two. Um, so when we set up a new site, we set up um, and we set up. You know, we did it on WordPress, just whatever. Nothing. I mean, it's a nice template site. It's nothing crazy, but our bounce rate went to point zero seven percent, and our page views increased by something like four hundred percent. All organic. We didn't like include anything else and all of a sudden we went from like or actually way more than that we went to like over 10,000 page views like immediately within the first month without any paid or anything just whatever and uh, versus our old one that we are lucky to do actually I said four times and it was like 10 times our first our first site was like a thousand page views a month or something we weren't paying attention to it at all and they're like wait all we did all we did all of our business and everything on social we're like wait a minute how do we not have like the website right and why because we downloaded the Google Analytics and then we realized Realize, holy smokes people are going to this number one but number two nobody's staying like that's a big problem so so I'm picking on us for that and the reason I'm picking on us as an example is because I know there's a lot of business owners right now listening to this that are just as bad so I want you to go set up Google Analytics and get your stuff together like we did <laughs> so thank you yeah, Sean. absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it, it takes a certain amount of discipline right to step mm-hmm. outside of your inherent bias but your, your point on your point on on bounce rate, for example, right? Let's just drill down a little bit there. Mm-hmm. So bounce rate is is a ranking factor, right? So it's something that the that, that the Google's algorithm looks at, but it's also a, a user experience consideration, right? Like what? So so what specifically? Just re- rhetorically here, you know, if someone lands on your homepage, how are you making strategic decisions with your content? What's above the fold with your navigation to drive them deeper into your website to avoid the bounce, right? Mm-hmm. So it's really basic questions we have to ask based on where we're landing traffic. And you can get to a lot of that in Google Analytics. A lot, a lot of the times it'll be someone's mm-hmm. homepage because of organic results. But if people are running paid media, that might not be the primary page to consider, right? So again, getting back to that data-driven methodology and really paying attention, and we, we say getting into the weeds, right, with the data and starting to make it actionable, right? So so you you, you need to understand how Google's algorithm works. You need to understand, you know, a media strategy and what you're trying to do there. And then you kind of piecemeal this all together, and that enables you to to take your data and make it so you can leverage it for your business and make it truly actionable, not just kind of a stockpile sitting there that, you know, you're not really actively doing anything with. Man, that's awesome. And I think that's a, a great way to end it, Sean, to avoid the bounce. But uh, before, we, before we do end yeah. it, um, um, if somebody's listening to this and they want to learn more about uh, Wilton Brands or to connect, I mean, what's the best way for them to do that? Sure. Well, you can always check out, you know, our website, wilton.com. You can see, you know, I'm doing a lot of walk in the walk there with our website. We actually just launched a fresh one in January. So you can kind of check that out. Um, you can also get in touch with me um, directly through LinkedIn. I'm always posting stuff there and sharing tidbits that, you know, I have a pretty good followership there. 
Uh, and if you're interested, you know, echo some of it on Twitter as well. But um, I'm also a pro-am photographer and travel photographer. If that's, if that's one of your interests as well, you can check me out on Instagram at uh, Sean Foot Photo. Fantastic. Well, hey, Sean, really appreciate you coming on the show today and sharing more about your background and all the great things you're doing over at Wilton Brands and also providing those tips for us small business owners out there. Get that Google Analytics set up. And uh, to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. Uh, leave me a review on the Apple iTunes Store. Uh, do all those great things we do to support our podcasters. And if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, Mission Matters Marketing, definitely give us a subscribe there. But also also, um, leave us some comments in the video. Love to hear your thoughts and uh, what kind of projects you're working on. And, Sean, thanks again for coming on the show.